Hello, my name is Katherine Daenerys. I'm a violist currently in Bloomington, Indiana, where I teach and perform with several regional orchestras. Today, I'm going to be going over this year's etude for the Oklahoma Allstate auditions for viola on behalf of Opera in the Ozarks. This year, the etude is Fiorillo 10, and I, in my opinion, this etude is kind of divided into two difficulties. We start off with a fairly straightforward detaché bow stroke with some tricky intonation. And then as we progress through the etude, in my opinion, the intonation gets slightly easier, but the bow strokes become more varied and we have to be mindful of that. So I'm going to play through the etude and then chat about some practice tips, um, things to bear in mind as you're working on the piece, and anything I think would be helpful for you. <laughs> So as I said in the introduction, I think the first challenge we encounter here is intonation. Um, I think I could practice this for ages and ages and still have intonation things to work on. So I would start out practicing this etude with just a slow detaché, just to um, get familiar with the harmonies, um, figure out how to execute the fingerings that are written. and. Um, Moving forward from there, we can start to do some um, more specific intonation targeted practice. So one of my favorite things to do is overlap bowing, which looks like this. Playing each note twice and then overlapping the second note with the first note of the next one. Um, and if we encounter a finger placement that we're not happy with, rather than sliding our finger to adjust, go back to the previous note as I did when I when my B natural was out of tune and start from the previous note. So we practice putting our finger down in the right place rather than adjusting when we get there. 
Um, I would start out doing this very slow as I did because it really lets you hear the individual intervals between each note. Once you're comfortable with that, you can add on double stops when possible. And same thing goes with double stops. Try to hit it right away and if you miss it go back to um, the beginning of that note and this is a very revealing way of finding out exactly where you are inclined to put your fingers in comparison to where you would like to be putting your fingers so once that slower intonation practice has been done um, you can head back to your regular detache and just start working it up to tempo um, of course, we start off in G major, and a lot of this is G major arpeggios, so we can be practicing those in our warm-up um, to just get comfortable in that tonal area. And we can also do some drone practice, so figuring out what chord you're playing. And then, so for the first line, it would we're playing G major arpeggios, so we turn on a G drone and really do some slow practice to try and fit each note into our G major chord. As far as the bow stroke we're going to do, it is going to be detache. Um, right in the middle works well. Oh my gosh, see, I told you I could practice intonation forever. Right in the middle. Um, if speed ends up being a um, limiting factor for you, um, you can do some of our rhythm speed drill tricks, so... And then vice versa, short, long. Another one I like to do with triplets is one slow triplet and one fast triplet. And then vice versa, fast then slow. And do that throughout. Um, and then, once we've gotten through our first five lines, that's pretty much uh, the style that we're going for. So we've worked on our intonation, our bow stroke is a detache in the middle. We want to try and minimize our string crossings as much as possible, so some fingers before bow practice can help with that. So we place, we move our bow, I'm going to do the second line so we can do a string crossing right off the bat. We move our bow, put our finger down, cross the string, finger down, finger down, cross the string, finger. Finger first, then string crossing, finger, finger. And that is really going to ensure that our left hand knows exactly what it's doing and our right hand knows exactly what it's doing in a slow tempo so that when we start to try and do it as written, everything just combines very, very, very naturally. When we get to one, two, three, four, five, the sixth line and we start having some different bowings, I think this bowing works best in the lower half towards the frog. <laughs> That means we have to get to that part of the bow in the measure before. So get to where you want to start the next bow stroke. And the way I think about executing this is everything is going to come from the string, including the eighth note staccato. So we're on the string, set the bow, lift the bow, not that much, I'm exaggerating, but you'll come off the string put the bow back down where you want to start the next figure stop the bow lift set so we're going to move in the lift if that makes sense so we play the slur we set and we start exactly where we stop and we travel once we've um, it's kind of like a 
Ole almost lift off of the string back to where we want to start. And so I would practice it slowly and mindfully like that. And then again, just slowly get faster, slowly make your breaks smaller. <laughs> to this line so I kind of like to the phrasing wise think of this as a little I don't know cheerful or maybe even cheeky or silly it's almost like polka e or something like that and then when we get back to the detache let's really highlight that it's a, a difference in the bow stroke and make it pretty smooth and we're headed towards the same bow stroke, that two plus one slur figure. So we're going to head back to the frog again. So that we're in the lower half, same concept here. And I try to keep my finger having some connection with the D string during this open A so that I can make my shift back down to third position. Um, intentionally so I know where I'm going. So you don't have to hold down the C or anything, but just don't completely abandon the string on the open A because you have to get right back down to it in third position. And then here we have the same bowing figure, but now we've, we're starting to modulate. And we're in G minor for the minute, so it can be a little bit darker here. Played one wrong note there at the end. But it's the same figure as the little cheerful moment I pointed out earlier, but again, G minor, so it's darker. Again, we'll accent the change in bow stroke. Not, not musically accent, highlight would be a better word. And after we go through this scale, we have our next bowing variation. So we get to the top of the second page. So here we have two groups of slurs and then two staccato notes. So the same thing principle holds as in the first slur variation. Um, we have to set the bow before the staccato notes. though because we have two slurs to maintain our position in the bow we don't have to lift it all in the staccato so we're just worrying about setting and make sure that the second slur takes you right back to where you started the first one and it can be tricky especially on the shifting ones but the second notes of the slur right before the staccato notes try not to clip them too much so we do want to hear them instead of stopping like that. Just really sustain through those notes as much as you can because they don't have staccatos on them. Moving forward, we get to consistent slurred groups of two notes, and I think it's nice to make this very smooth, so very legato, because again, it's a new bowing figure and it has its own character. <laughs> We have these big jumps from the A string to the C string, so we should prepare our elbow as we go up to inching away from our A string level to get down to the C string. So that's a higher elbow than I would usually have on the A string, but it's so I could just drop right over to the C string. And I probably should have mentioned that earlier as well. For example, the first measure I'm seeing is the first measure of the third line. There as well, we want to be thinking about the C string that we're headed to. And our fingers before bow practice that I mentioned will be awesome here when we're doing it slow. So we'll get our finger down there and then making sure our arm is ready. But back to where we just were, 
we've got these very smooth sets of two slurs and then we go back to our detache and I think the harmony and the return to this separate bow stroke is a pretty intense character here. <laughs> of the bow stroke that we worked on on the first page. It's just in a different part of the beat. So again, we're setting before the staccato note. And this one, because it's uneven again, we can lift the bow after we've set for the eighth note to travel back to where we need to be. And Later on, we're going to get accents, so I don't think it's a bad idea to keep this first section with this bowing a little bit calmer, because there are no accents. Sorry. And you can give a little bit of oomph to those interesting note changes, so when we go to the F sharp, and then when we go to the E, maintains the same harmony for a minute, you can relax again and then highlight when it gets interesting. When we have the accents, I like to do it with a combination of our finger pressure and our and using a little bit more bow. Again, always setting before the staccato so that we can have a nice lift and get us back to where we want to be. But slow practice for this for me would look like and then as we get to the A string interjection notes, to get to the A string, I do not pick my bow up off the string. I roll over the strings so that my bow is still set. Then I lift back to the G string. takes you right to the end of the piece. So you can highlight the more interesting interjection notes if you like, but just bear in mind where the accent is located and it's within the slur. So in general, in terms of phrasing, as I've gone through, I've kind of highlighted some different moods that I would label sections. You don't have to view the moods the same as I do, but I do think it's important to plan out some sort of musical variety and phrasing so that our etude sounds very musical and not just like an exercise. So I think in general it's safe in this um, etude to kind of phrase with the contour of the music. So if you find yourself moving up a scale or an arpeggio, you can let yourself crescendo. If you find yourself coming down, you can back away. If you'd like, um, look for interesting harmonic notes like I was pointing out in this last phrase. Um, that you can kind of highlight and bring out. Um, and there are, of course, many, many different options, but like I said, I think that it's just important to have a plan and have an intention, and then the people that are listening to you will automatically just be dialed up with a little bit more interest because you're, you're turning it into a piece of music. So it's not an easy etude. There are many, many things to practice, but I think if you take the time to break it down very intentionally and mindfully, then as you continue to practice, you'll improve very, very quickly, and I think you'll be in great shape. So thank you very much for watching. I wish you the best of luck on your auditions, and happy practicing.